Well, hi once again to the webinar. So the topic of today is to celebrate Indigenous voice used as agent of positive change. Yeah, because um, this webinar is created to, to celebrate the uh, World Indigenous Day, which is yesterday, and still continue the, the celebration to today as well for us. Yeah, so um, my name is Kade Nishaganda Ramathat. You can just quickly call me like shortly here as Kade. So I'm working as Youth Engagement and Social Innovation Officer from UNDP Thailand. Yeah, so I'm very um, happy to be with all of you today and be able to, to talk with um, Indigenous youth and uh, to hear their story today. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me introduce all of, uh, all of the panelists of us today uh, that will be with us today, and then um, we will can we can get into the first round of the the, the question. Yeah, so the topic today, um, as mentioned, is would be about um, celebrating the indigenous youth voice. So we will hear um, stories of the indigenous youth leaders that are working in various um, uh, aspects. So we'll start with the first person we will have. Sabah, yeah, so Sabah Rani Mah Mahajan from Nepal. So Sabah is an indigenous youth activist from Nepal. So um, she, was, she is working for indigenous issue and justice in national and also regional level. So um, as uh, she worked especially with indigenous youth as an executive council member of the Asia Indigenous Youth Platform or AIYP. Some of you may heard about it, and also working uh, for the Youth Federation of Indigenous Nationalities, Federal Council of Nepal as well. Yeah, and currently she is nominated by Bagmati State Government for the position of executive member of the Bagmati Provincial Youth Council under the Department of Environmental and Labors. So she will have a lot of experience to share with us on the um, her work as advocacy for indigenous rights and justice and also environment as well. So um, to say hi first, Sapa, that you can wave your hand. Hi, Sapa. Yeah, from, from Nepal. Yeah. And then the second person that uh, here with us today to represent indigenous youth, we have the representative from Philippines. Yeah. So uh, we have City. Aisa Usopalt uh, from Philippines. Yeah. So uh, she is a uh, Maranao Hill in Lake Lanao, uh, specifically in Barangay Tagoranao. Yeah, in Mindanao, Philippines. Yeah. Thank you for smiling. I try my best to pronounce it. Yeah. So uh, she is a young entrepreneur. Currently, she is a head, uh, project head of Cacao Merano. So it is a pioneering chocolate bar producer in Lanao del Sur. Yeah. And um, she has a lot of story to share about her experience doing plant cacao seeding and also as educator and also chocolate artisan and her experience as entrepreneur, young entrepreneur, especially young uh, indigenous entrepreneurs. So we will hear her story uh, today. I uh, met her last month. So she, she came to join like Youth Collab Summit and her story is very inspiring. So I'm very happy to, to hear her story once again today. Yeah, so beside um, these two amazing like indigenous youth, we also have, of course, like we have to work with like intergeneration, right? And also multi-stakeholder. So we are very happy to have the CSO with us today as well uh, from AIPP. Of course, it's a very important like uh, organization that work to, to empower and, and also like um, work uh, with, for indigenous group of people. So uh, today we have Shohel Chandra from Bangladesh. So he's currently served as the program officer under the Human Rights Campaign and Policy Advocacy Program of the Asia Indigenous People Pact. Yeah, so currently he's based in Chiang Mai. Yeah, and um, yeah, so Shohel is from Hajong Indigenous People from Bangladesh. And we will hear more from him today or like how AIPP is supporting the indigenous network and maybe learn more of like uh, what AIPP work with, with, with youth as well. Yeah, so welcome Shohel. Uh, okay, and um, last panelists that are here with us today, um, we also have a representative from private sector. So as mentioned, like to empower um, 
the engineers use, it's very important to, to collab between like youth themselves, CSO, and also private sector as well, and actually government as well as like many of you are working uh, together with the, with the government sector. So um, for representative from private sector, we have uh, Hele Wataro from New Zealand. So she is um, currently uh, working for HP and has a, a, has a strong passion in um, in term of the human rights yeah so um she will share with us today in term of the perspective of how H, um, hp work on on the diversity and inclusion yeah so please welcome all the speakers today yay so before we go into the first round of the the question so we have the get we already get to know the, the the speakers today so we want to get to know everyone as well on um where you come from so um i just launching the poll here so just um tell us who you are that you are participating with us so some of you may be indigenous youth some of you might not be used but indigenous some of you are youth or I am, um, or you are an organization working with indigenous groups, or you are just a person that are very curious and ready to learn more about indigenous youth story. Yeah, so you can click the poll so we can see like how many people are here uh, from which group today. Cool. Uh, okay, maybe I'm waiting for like other 30 seconds so we can see the poll. Okay. Yeah, so um, 84% are participate, but I think we get overall sense of people. So I think we have a lot of people who are used and also uh, people who are, are curious to learn more, of course, about the indigenous story. So um, no matter where you are, welcome you all. And I think we are ready to learn more about the story today. Okay, so um, without further ado, maybe we, we start with Saba to hear her story first. Yeah, so, so as Saba, um, from, from your uh, background, I think you are the representative for Indigenous youth in across multiple platforms. So I just would like to hear from, from you first on what are the issues that you think the Indigenous youth are concerning and, and advocate for this day. Yeah, please welcome. Hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Kadi. First of all, thank you very much for the uh, lovely introduction as well. And also, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the you know, entire team of UNDP for this opportunity. And also, wish everyone the Happy International Day of World Indigenous People 2023. Now, we're jumping towards the question, you know, um, Indigenous youth actually, not only in Nepal, but worldwide, they have taken on, you know, great responsibility as a future leader of their communities, you know, by taking action to revitalize indigenous knowledge, be it language, culture, you know, safeguarding biodiversity and everything. So we actually collaborate, uh, you know, both individually and collectively, harnessing the power of our youth-led organization to achieve our goal. So there are various issues, you know, that indigenous youth are concerned about and they advocate about. So some of them um, being, you know, um, land and right resource, so we are the frontliners while defending our territories, right? And also we are taking the stewardship of our land and resource to maintain biodiversity and ecological balance. So in Nepal, we are facing, um, you know, land grabbing and militarization uh, in the pretext of development, such as, you know, fast track or be it hydropower. We are alienated from our land. We have been uh, subject to colonization. So, uh, you know, before we used to hear from our ancestors and elders that, um, they used to face these kind of problems, but now consciously or unconsciously, we are facing that, you know, intergenerational trauma that our ancestor went through and that has um, affected our entire lifestyle. So um, except from that, we strive to ensure that our cultural heritage is passed down to future generation, because as we know, a lot of indigenous history and culture is actually orally passed down. So it is very crucial for us to prioritize, you know, the interaction among our elders, among our ancestors. So we also advocate and work for that. Uh, besides that, I think um, 
uh, the one of the important factor that we advocate for or the issue that we advocate for is the elimination of all kind of discrimination and violence uh, so especially you know indigenous um, young indigenous women and girls they are su subjugated towards various crimes right and violence and they are very much vulnerable towards sexual exploitation so uh, and on the other hand um, you know the policy maker i think especially in nepal they seem to love this blanket approach right but then i think it is actually from where all of the systematic and you know the structural uh, discrimination that we face begins so we need to recognize you know the the intersectional nature of the of the challenges that we youth face right and um, the the young girls face so we need to make sure we create this safe in the environment uh, for the indigenous young women to uh, so that they feel respected um, and they feel safe. So rather than that, another issue or another thing we as a indigenous youth we advocate for is um, active and meaningful policy engagement. So indigenous youth, as indigenous youth, we have been very vocal about our right, right, be it land right, be it human right, um, our cultural right. So we have been representing our organization, our people in the international forum as well. Uh, but let's talk about um, from the governmental sector then there is no particular you know quota or some kind of particular um, uh, participation as indigenous youth in this kind of significant forum so we have been advocating for that as well and like um, uh, you know i i was uh, nominated as one of the ec members in the governmental level so while working in that committee what i have found is that you know um, like they are really afraid to even incorporate the word uh, indigenous in their policy. So this is where we stand. And uh, there are a lot of work uh, we need to do in order to change that, right? And also most importantly, um, I think we also seek um, you know, uh, international solidarity because if we talk about the case of Nepal, I think not only in Nepal, but uh, in a lot of the uh, uh, you know, countries in Asia, in Nepal, our government has, uh, you know, already ratified various internet uh, international conventions like UN DRIP or let's be it, uh, let's say ILO 169. But I think more than a decade later as well, this mechanism has not been implemented in Nepal. So we need that international solidarity so that we can, you know, um, like collectively pressurize the government so that they implement this on the ground level. And uh, as we all know, indigenous youth, uh, as indigenous youth, we are we are at the forefront of the environmental advocacy as well. We have a very intimate connection with our land and we work to combat climate crisis, to protect the biodiversity and also, uh, you know, promote sustainable land and resource management and also I think uh, if we if we uh, you know look towards the scenario in the rural areas as well, a lot of indigenous youth they do not speak the national language. So when we are disseminating any kind of information, if it is not uh, you know translated into their mother tongue, then it becomes very um, you know hard for them to understand. So we have been working on cultural appropriate and quality education as well. So um, I think concluding uh, with the, with the quote, I like to say that our voices may be young, you know, uh, but our determination to reclaim and honor our indigenous heritage is very, very fierce. Uh, so thus will ensure that it thrives for generation and generations to come. So thank you. That uh, will be it for my first questions. Thank you. Thank you, Saba. So it's very like comprehensive and very insight insightful. Even you say that, yeah, maybe like because we are young, like our voice still like from youth. But actually, I feel that like the 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 content that you have shared with us is very comprehensive and and holistic view of the issue as well. So maybe just would like to to add from from perspective, we have like uh from from one aspect. So you have shared a lot about the uh, um the challenge in terms of violence, mother tongues, land right, and 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 many things. But um one one thing is also uh as you also working on uh, advocacy on climate. Action. So I would like to hear more on um, how do you perceive the contribution of indigenous youth to conserve the nature or if, if they have any concern about this issue this day? Yeah, so thank you very much for this uh, very important question as well. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we indigenous youth are at the fr uh, forefront of the environmental advocacy, right? So we play this crucial role in conserving our nature and addressing this climate change. And um, because we, we have this uh, lot of issues and our contribution are also diverse and meaningful in various ways, 
so why I'm saying this is because uh, let's talk in terms of um, traditional knowledge, right? We indigenous young, we possess this um, traditional ecological knowledge that has been passed down to us by our ancestors uh, through generation, you know, by our elders, they have taught us how to be the guardian of the nature, how to love it, how to how to care it, how to worship it, right? So this knowledge um, includes insights into sustainable resource management, you know, local ecosystem, and also promotes how to uh, uh, in harmony live with the nature. And you know, we indigenous community we have our own ways to conserve. Uh, in 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 Nepal, what we say is jal, zamin, and jungle. So that is water, land, and forest. We have our own ways to conserve it, right? So thus these contributions are, are very essential, uh, you know, for the protection of the biodiversity ecosystem and cultural heritage. And we youth have been uh, taking this stewardship for, from a long, long time now. And also, um, you know, as indigenous youth, we, we are deeply connected with our land and natural resource, like I said before. So, uh, but then uh, when, we, when we look from the perspective of government, I think for the government and colonizers, you know, all of this water and land, they are merely, um, you know, just a product that could be taxed. For them, it is just some kind of resource, right? But for us, for indigenous youth, it is very sacred and, and we worship it, um, we love it, we, we nurture, nurture it, right? And uh, even a slight disturbance in the ecosystem uh, could actually, uh, do a lot of harm. It is actually uh, one of the vehicle for climate change and it affects our everyday life. So as a steward of our environment, advocating uh, you know, for the protection of, we have been advocating for the protection of this forest, our um, rivers and uh, ecosystems as well. And uh, you know, uh, like in the present context, a lot of indigenous youth are already um, experiencing these kind of impacts of climate change. Uh, but despite all of these, um, uh, you know, uh, adversity, we are actually very much resilient toward it and uh, all thanks to our, uh, you know, traditional indigenous knowledge. So rather than that, um, apart from that, you know, we indigenous youth have also um, bring an attention to the impact, uh, you know, impact of climate change happening in our community and, and the world at large. We participate in protests or let's say awareness campaigns. And, uh, you know, we have been also engaging with policymakers to demand meaningful action. So I'd also like to share some example, like for instance, um, I'm also an ACAF fellow. So Youth Empowerment in Climate Action Platform, I'm, I'm an ACAF fellow. And you know, last year in 2022, I had this beautiful opportunity uh, to, to be a part of this ACAP fellowship program, you know, a six month long program, which was aimed to actually train indigenous youth across Asia to ensure that their demands um, uh, regarding the climate action are met. So uh, I, was, I, I was very grateful because I, I get to meet a lot of uh, fellows that were also advocating for this climate crisis. And I got to know about the initiatives that they were taking in their community, in their ground. Uh, so it was, it was such an impactful um, you know, program that I had, but also you know, on the other hand, um, a lot of indigenous youth are also unaware about a lot of UN mechanisms. So I, I also like to emphasize on the thing that uh, you know, they, they, they do not get uh, proper opportunities or they do not often get opportunity to participate and voice their concern in these kind of significant events a lot. So I think in coming days, we should also, uh, you know, focus on this matter. And apart from that, uh, you know, indigenous community, as indigenous communities, we, we rely on all of the natural resources, right? Be it for fishing, hunting, or agriculture. So as indigenous youth, uh, we are uh, taking on these innovative ideas and practices uh, so that we can um, make everything more sustainable and so that it will be there for the future generation as well. And also that, uh, you know, we, we have been contributing our, our knowledge by sharing our knowledge, our perspective into global discussion as well. And what it does, it actually um, fosters the, you know, cross-cultural understanding and encourages the um, integration um, of you know uh, indigenous knowledge that we have into mainstream conservation practices, right? So um, you know, at last, what I like to share is encouraging the active participation of indigenous youth like us is very much very much crucial so that we um, you know effectively respond to climate change. And um, so yeah, I like to end by saying that there is no. Um, climate justice, you know, without the inclusion of uh, indigenous community. So we, that we should always keep that in mind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gadi. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Saba. So um, I think it's very like um, bring us to see the like overview of like how is indigenous youth life, right? Like how is the relation between um, like um, cultures and also the nature as well. Um, we see how relevant it is on like how uh, we should engage like indigenous youth to to also um, conserve the nature or, or do the, the climate action as well. So thank you so much for, for um, your experience sharing. And then I think the second person will move to city. So still like um, she is the, the social entrepreneur, right? And and her um, entrepreneur is also related to the nature as well. So um, in this perspective, I think she she can share a bit more about her enterprise on on how, what is it and what uh, what role is key in conserving the nature. And um, at the same time, city can also provide us the perspective of the uh, what is the current state of the indigenous youth livelihood as well. Yeah, so like as as Sabat mentioned, that is linked between like the nature and living, right? And then uh, from from city perspective, you can share with us to 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 hear more about the uh, per, um, the status or uh, the the current state of the livelihood of the indigenous youth and what support that might be need as well. Yeah, to enhance the decent work opportunities. Yeah, Sitsi. Hello, so good afternoon to each and everyone. Yeah, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. So uh, happy to celebrate the indigenous voices here in true, Zoom through everyone, everybody. So yeah, and also uh, to our friend, hi Ryan. Okay, so I am Siti Aisabot. I am the project head of Cacao Merenau. So last 2021, we found out that the cacao pod that growing in our land can make can turn into a chocolate. So uh, basically, we did some research on how to really make the chocolates that we are doing right now. So um, it is very nice that we did it from scratch, that everything that we are doing is really so... Um, exciting that uh, everything is uh, we really need to study it and we really need to do the first hand on how we are doing it and also yeah like through 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 the way along the way we found uh, people uh, they are the more knowledgeable others who really help us uh, to where we are right now so yeah so the local the indigenous uh, youth livelihoods uh, often uh, Ha, uh, challenge uh, face challenges uh, yeah first is due to the limited uh education that we ha we have and also of uh, some are they are in the far flung area so they cannot really see or they cannot really enjoy what we are enjoying or the people who are enjoying and also uh yeah so we are also some are behind from the 21st uh 21st skills that we really need to have. So the, indig the indigenous people there are just so focused on what they have in mind for their daily basis. So um, because of the um, barrier on the, on the internet connections that they don't have, that they cannot do, so they cannot um, search or find what really they really wanted to do. And also to the skills, the limited skills that they have uh, yeah, also the job opportunities. There is a uh, limited job opportunities there. So with the Cacao now with our enterprise, so we were able to uh, give them a, a, a skills also. And also, yeah, they are deprived from the communication also due to the uh, limited internet connection and also to the uh, low knowledge on the social media. So they thought that, uh, yeah, the social media that we have is like just for posting, but they didn't know that through the social media, they can learn more new information that they can they might use in, in the future and also in the enterprise that they are aiming for. And also um, youth indigenous in our place uh, lacks a lifelong learning and also a skills that they can do. Yeah, so... To enhance uh, the doesn't work opportunities in our place, so it is great if they have. Uh, they should be. We must be supported with educational, um, educational programs uh, that they need or they they can achieve. And also, skills development is really one of the thing that we need. So 
uh, in my child in my in my experience I search everything on the internet yeah and also I I, I joined with my own man with my own money I I went I go to different places to 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 experience skills that I I haven't experienced before and also to answer all the gaps that we have during our production yeah like through that uh we we, we answered all the the problems that we've encountered and also because of the uh because of joining uh seminars outside our place outside our place we were able to 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 law the losses that we have encountered so far and also um because of the of, because of going out from our comfort zone we, i have met so many brilliant people who are really really there to help without any money or any uh money in return they just really want to help us they just want to uh hear our stories and then there they want to help the enterprise that we have right now and also um our voices was is here right now yeah Thank you so much, City, for, for sharing. So I think um you have mentioned like a uh, zero challenge in terms of livelihood for, for the indigenous youth, such as education skill, lack of ed uh, education skill, and also like infrastructure support, right? But um at the same time, you also share your experience like from uh, do, uh, learning from doing in your like social entrepreneurship journey that is help you learn more um, during during doing this work as well. So I think um maybe I would like you to to kind of like um, share with you like elaborate a little bit more on, on your um, entrepreneurship journey as a young indigenous entrepreneurs. So is there any challenge that you are facing as um, like indigenous youth entrepreneur or is there any opportunities that you see that it might be the opportunity to, to, um, to inspire other like indigenous youth to, to run a social enterprise more? Yeah. As a youth, yeah, we really, really have so many, many, we encountered many challenges along the way. So first is first is the machines that we really have. So the chocolates is very luxury and very there are so many machines that really that we need. So first is we just uh ventured, we just bought a machine, it's a melanger. So it's quite expensive, but we really uh, need to buy it because it's the heart of chocolate making and the chocolate production. So along the way, because we really, really don't know how it really works. So it was broken, but then I didn't stop there. So I, 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 I asked people how to really handle these things. And fortunately, Many people help us, yeah, like they give us another machine for us to continue what we're doing. And also, uh, yeah, so the, the less knowledge about the chocolate production, so because we have a less uh, losses along, yeah, so we really need to, to read, we really need to, to surf on the internet and we also watch uh, how to do it. So with the help of internet connection, with the help of internet, we were able to find the answers that we are, the, the gaps along the way. And also, um, as a woman, as a woman youth, uh, I was really asked if I can really do my job or my task as a, a project head of, of this enterprise. Yeah, like a girl or a woman will go farming. That's their question in mind. So I just, I raised myself to really do this because this is not really for me but this is for my father so i am doing this for my father because my father is yeah been doing the farm the field for almost 10 years already so i really want him to see that that what he is doing is having is already having a uh a, a, a result it is already having a result so so yeah through me i really want him to to be fulfilled and there is already a result in what he is doing and also the the access to capital so it's very hard for for us as a, as a start as a startup to to access to capital yeah like because they thought that we are just doing this for fun but this is really a good venture not only in our barangay but i guess the whole province that where we i where i am right now so i guess they really need to realize that this is this is a big opportunity not only for us 
but also for the for our province and also in the Barm province. Uh, okay, and now is uh, yeah, the the enterprise is new to our place, so I really need to make uh, effort on elaborating this to them and uh may explaining this to them that this work is really good and this is uh this can help not only us but the entire uh province so so opportunities there are so many opportunities in in our uh enterprise so first i went to different places not to explore but to learn new things i uh, learned how to cultivate the land yeah like how to plant the seedling properly because before my father just planted it there but that now we know how to plant the the diameter uh, the distance between two plants in in there and also I have met yeah I mentioned the more knowledgeable other people that I met through all the along the way so they are still in contact with me they are there to support me, support me and answer my question every time I have a question in mind. And also when I uh, encountered lapses. So they are always there for me. They are always there to, to answer all my questions. And also uh, through the, um, the, the youth collab, I am able to present my our work not only in the Philippines, but in, in, in Thailand where there are more than 20, 20 countries who are there uh, to... To, the, to listen to listen and 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 in return I I, I so I, I see so much support and like every now and then they are uh, chatting on me and contacting me and also networks became became bigger and I am so so blessed that I am yeah I'm part of the youth go love and I am here to represent the Philip the Moreno, uh people in the Philippines. Thank you so much, City. It's very inspiring journey. So I think even like when you mentioned like there are a lot of challenge, but like along the way when you are saying you're still like smiling and I, I think that you are enjoying the challenge and, and you're also learning from doing it like every day. So I feel like uh, part of the opportunity is like uh, the opportunity to, to try to do it. So you unlock new skill every day and it's not that you only try alone, but um, there, there are the ecosystem like to support the work um, when when you you're trying it yeah okay thank you so much CT so um thank I think by like uh, more people uh, maybe like more indigenous used to um think about the resource that you have and and how can you like uh make it into the the, the impactful enterprise as well yeah so I think next one we we move forward to to AIPP so as a very like um the organization that that support like indigenous group and as the theme of of um indigenous um they this this year is on the the you indigenous youth exchange agent so of course we would like to hear from aipp on like how do you see the role of um youth in driving indigenous agenda and as well like i'll draw from your experience maybe you have worked with indigenous youth before through aipp so what would be the tips <laughs> that you can suggest us because there are many people who are curious about like oh would like to know more and and work more with indigenous youth so so what are the tips that you you can provide us like if we want to engage with indigenous youth yeah so uh welcome shohel yes uh thank you very much for the opportunity uh thank you for organizing this event actually this is very important moment no because yesterday we have celebrated the international day of the world indigenous peoples and thanks uh the speakers and also all participants so yes uh it's very important so you uh, indigenous youth uh, are very important uh, in indigenous society. You know? They can make change. That's why uh, this year, this IPD uh, theme, you no, know, it is uh, prioritizing the issues of youth, like uh, the theme of uh, the International Day of the World Indigenous Peoples was indigenous youth as agents of change for self determination, which is very important. So yes, actually, uh, what is the situation of indigenous peoples now? We can say that indigenous peoples are one of the most uh, marginalized groups in the world. So to change the situation, so indigenous youth, they need to come ahead. 
and we have seen that there is a lot of uh, examples that indigenous youth involvement contribution in, uh, in society and, and any uh, struggle and movement of indigenous people for most of the uh, movement of the rights of indigenous peoples there are uh, direct involvement of indigenous youth if you if i uh, remember the period uh, of the indigenous movement from the british colonized uh, period to now we will find many young heroes or heroines in many countries of asia we can remember the name of like uh, birsha munda mr birsha munda who was only 25 years old who fought against the british rule no? and we can remember the name of uh, uh, birsha munda who was in, in the jharkhand you know, who actually uh, emerged as an important revolutionary of the indian uh, independence movement and brought uh, reform in the policies and also in bangladesh uh, we can mention um, uh, rashimuni hajong who fought against jamundar you know jamundar means landlords illegal tax movement system during the british period and we also know the santal heroes like sidhu murmu kanu murmu and their sister pulmoni murmu who are in the struggle of santal hul hul means revolution and let down their lives for their rights no? so that's why it is very important and uh, actually uh, we can see that indigenous uh, youth they are change maker and uh, how actually uh, we uh, app play role no uh, to work with indigenous uh, youth you know uh, app has already taken some significant initiative for indigenous youth under rcb program regional capacity building program uh, i think establishing the aiyp network asia indigenous youth platform is very important and uh, to deal these emerging youth issues app in collaboration with unesco and undp established aiyp in 2019 in chiang mai and the vision of this aiyp is like we envision a sustainable world in which indigenous youth play a leading role in achieving respect and equality for indigenous peoples through the full recognition of their inherent rights and uh, we are focusing the issues uh, to protect indigenous knowledge and culture, uh, access uh, quality education, including mother tongue based education, strengthening LTR land territory rights and food security, participate in decision making process, and provide sustainable livelihood for indigenous youth. So, yes, uh, some suggestions and tips actually, how can we go ahead uh, the effective engagement involving indigenous youth? It is very important. And AAPP already have a, a strategy plan and uh, prioritizing the values and core principles of AAPP. That's are very important for all, not only indigenous youth. This is self-determination, co-responsibility, reconciliation, uh, voluntarism, and foundational leadership. To achieve these uh, values and AAPP's goals, we have some uh, several activities. Uh, this is very important we and we are implementing uh engaging our six programs like rcb is one program other program like i'm working with human rights program environment another program and and uh, we have like that six program so under the rcb program it's very uh, very important that they are focusing indigenous youth and uh, the sub several activities are like i can mention if we can follow that uh, distributive leadership and inclusive governance. APP as a regional organization, always they try to make distributive leadership through the APP member organizations and partners and networks in 14 countries of Asia. And leadership integration, this is also very important. Leadership integration, we can also expand our leadership to promote and integrate issues across uh, local areas and countries within its sub region. That's why we are. Uh, we have some indigenous fellowship activities, some research, project development, that kind of activities. And we are doing also community organizing. So this is very important to work closely with the indigenous communities. Now we are, we are talking for the self-determination, but for the self-determination, we need to prioritize the indigenous community. So what communities practice on self-determination and their 
self government system so we need to uh, follow this and our indigenous youth should learn about this self government system uh, from the community and another activity is ground zero fellowship which is very important so we expect the indigenous youth who are in current time they will be leader great leader in the world also that's why the indigenous young person they need to learn from the indigenous communities that's why we uh, app is trying to develop thing then uh, prepare some indigenous youth through this ground zero fellowship activity so that's why it is also very important so you implement this kind of uh, activities through the indigenous youth that's why uh, finally again i can uh, say that indigenous youth is the base agent for the society to change develop the society and now they are representing in a global and uh, regional level and also contributing uh, to uh, focusing the like climate change issues environmental issues and other things so for the indigenous youth also need to engage this kind of involvement and another issue is so they need to learn the uh, the indigenous self determination system and their self government system so what is this no even the polity united nation declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples mentioned the self government issues and our epic issues free from influence that's why our indigenous uh, people uh, youth they should learn this and develop to change the society thank you Thank you so much, Shohel. So um, I think you have mentioned like um the work of AIPP, like that um you are engaged in indigenous youth of um driving the agenda of um of the indigenous people as well. Um, so if anyone would like to learn more about AIPP, I think we we have um the website put in the chat as well. Uh, you can also find out more about AIYP as well. Yeah, thank you, uh, Shohel. And I think our uh, last person will move to LA. So as um, from the private sector perspective that are very focusing on the uh, diversity and inclusion as well. So I think like um, for, for this question, we would like to hear from you uh, more uh, from, from the experience um, that HP is doing as HP is promoting um, human rights and, and diversity. So what is your perspective um, on the role of private sector in supporting the diversity and inclusion agenda. Please, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa ko a Hayley Whataraua hau. Uh, no uh, uh, ho um, thanks for having me. I'm very pleased to be here and among such a great panel today. Um, I'm from Hayley. I'm from New Zealand. I'm based in Hong Kong um, and I lead the Human Rights Program for HP. Um, so today I just wanted to take a quick moment to give you a perspective from the private sector. We've learned and heard so many great stories today and I have to say that I'm hugely encouraged by um, what we've heard and what people have shared today and really inspired by the work that, that's happening already. Um, so the, the work that we do at HP is perhaps a little bit different, but maybe I can share just a little bit about some of our goals and how they relate to Indigenous people in general and also Indigenous youth. Um, so the first thing that I would say from a corporate perspective is making sure that from a policy perspective, Indigenous people are recognised. So all of us here are from different territories, different nations, different lands, and they're all equally important. And for a global company like ours, we have to be sure that we're recognising that as a starting point. So for HP, what that means is that we've incorporated uh, Indigenous people as an explicit reference within our human rights policy. Um, further to that, we've also included human rights defenders in that policy as well. So for a corporate brand like ours, it's really important to make sure that we connect with the people that we um, are working with in different communities. So from the perspective of Indigenous people, it's covered from a policy perspective and also from human rights defenders who we know are a lot of the time also Indigenous and Indigenous youth. So from a policy perspective, it's all important to a starting point, but it's only just a starting point. As many of you know, it, policy needs to be put into practice as well. So we also filter all of our um, policies and recommendations and standards onto all of our network throughout the world. So the same standards as we hold ourselves to, we expect of our partners, of our suppliers, and of anyone that we do business with. So from a sort of broad lens, we're looking at um, how we can 
elevate the position of Indigenous peoples and have their voices heard right from the start. So I'm just going to touch quickly because I know there's question time and I don't want to take up all the time today, but I want to mention that we at HP have one particular goal that's of interest here. It's um, we want to be the most just and sustainable tech company in the world. And what does that actually mean in practice and how does it re relate to Indigenous youth? Um, actually, it relates quite closely to a lot of what we've heard already today. There are three specific elements that we concentrate on at HP. One is climate, one is human rights, and one is digital equity. So those three elements, is, uh, are, apart from doing normal business and producing computers and also printers and other things, we really want to make sure we're making a sustainable footprint around the world. So those are the three areas. Uh, I happen to lead the human rights dimension of that. So I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper just for the next couple of minutes to give you a sense of what that looks like. Um, so the four areas of one of the programs that my team leads is around empowerment. And I mentioned this one today because I've heard a little bit from Saba about you know, discrimination and about land and rights. And you mentioned some really interesting things and I love what you said about you know, your voices are mighty and I think they are and fierce voices need to be heard, right? So the four areas that we focus on in HP, the first is well-being. So in our theory, we think that indigenous people, people at large need to be well from a health standpoint in order to be able to serve their communities and the people that they work with. So well-being is, a, is the first pillar of our work. Um, and we mean not just physical, like health and safety perspective, but also the emotional side as well. I think someone mentioned, you know, intergenerational trauma and those types of things come into play. The second is voice. Again, really resonated with what others said today about voice. We concentrate heavily on that aspect of it, meaning that we don't want to just hear the voices and collect information, but actually um, act on what people are saying in different communities um, and making sure we involve stakeholders in all of those processes. So voice is the second one. The third is development, which I also heard from UCT a little bit about, you know, the skills gaps, the um, development opportunities in, in terms of maybe digital literacy, financial literacy, entrepreneurship, those types of things. Um, we offer through HP Foundation an online learning platform that's completely free of charge. It might be of interest to some of you where you can pick up these entrepreneurial school skills and you can also look at digital literacy and other things as well. Financial literacy, how to run a small business, how to set up um, small business enterprises as well. So that could be of interest. Um, the last thing I will say is the fourth thing. So we have got well-being, voice, and we've got development. The last is what we broadly call agency. And what we mean by that is once you're well and you've got a voice and you've, you've been heard and you've improved your skills, what we would love to encourage and support is for Indigenous youth and other, other groups, vulnerable groups, to actually have a say in the spaces that they, they need to. So supporting advocacy, supporting um, young entrepreneurs, young youthful people into the spaces where those voices can be heard. I think that's really connected as well to self-determination. It gives you the ability to, once you've gained those skills and had some experience and done other things, to really um, elevate the voices of youth and for your own um, purposes. So I think that agency self-determined part is a really important dimension uh, that we look at as well. So I want to end because I know we'd love to take questions from people. Um, just a couple of more notes, a uh, couple further notes. One is we're really interested in stakeholders. I think that Indigenous youth should see themselves as key stakeholders to brands like ours um, and other corporate brands as well. These days we're held to a pretty high bar around uh, community engagement, climate change, human rights. And in all of those spaces, your voices are very important because you have the intergenerational knowledge, you know your lands, your people, your territories. Brands don't. And so I think you have a very powerful um, position in, in bringing those voices to the fore. Um, the second point is partnerships. I think one of the things that uh, businesses should consider more these days is looking to Indigenous youth, Indigenous organisations, um, on the ground enterprises who know the language, who know the context, who can actually inform uh, brands like ours of the right thing to do in a particular context. So I think that's a really important part of it as well. So I will end by saying um, 
I really encourage and invite everyone to connect with us through um, HP directly with our team. We have a human rights team. We're happy to chat, help in any way that we can. Um, we're also more specifically working with UNDP on developing a particular project around what I talked about, empowerment and Indigenous youth. So I really um, invite you all to be a part of that and inform the design of it because it, that's the only way in our view it's going to be um, as impactful as it could be uh, with all of your invoices and, and your input in that. So I will leave it there, but I, I thank you very much for the time. I've really enjoyed listening to the other speakers and I'm very encouraged um, and super excited about what the, whole, uh, the future holds for Indigenous youth. Thank you. Thank you, Hele. Um, it's very interesting sharing. So I think we see more connection, like not only like indigenous youth um trying to advocate. Um, uh, we have CSO supporting this movement and also the private sector that doing the movement to 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 listen to to more issue from people and and work together as well. So I think it's the have like um the good uh, opportunities that that we hear uh the initiative of HP today as well. So we we might see more more uh, opportunity. To to, to collab, uh, collaborate further as well. Yeah, so um, thank you so much of the speaker for, for sharing your, your stories. Uh, I think we have several questions that has been posed in, in the Q&A part that uh, maybe any of you would like to elaborate as well. So uh, I'll read it out um, about like, I think there are two questions that are similar. So one is um, asking like, what are the key factor on improving and maintaining the indigenous culture? And um, I think it's go along with the second question as well, that uh, why culture practice, tradition, and value of indigenous people are important nowadays. Yeah, so um, I think these two question is, is about like the cultures of like how you maintain it, uh, why it's important and, and how you maintain it. Yeah, so uh, I keep it open as uh, all of you are, are indigenous, all of the speakers today are indigenous people. Um, any of you would like to answer, like please I'll just turn on your mic. <laughs> Okay, so so I just like to quickly answer uh, both of the questions. So regarding the, uh, you know, key factors on improving and maintaining the indigenous culture, I think looking for the from the perspective of indigenous youth itself, uh, the first and foremost thing is awareness. You know, like I've uh, also touched this factor while answering the question that Kade posed before. So uh, you know, a lot of time indigenous youth uh, themselves are not aware about their right you know, the right of self-determination and whatnot. So sometimes we need to make sure that they know their roots, you know, they know that that they possess uh, um, so, so, much, uh, so many rights. So what we need to do is make sure that we aware uh, these people um, so that they, they come and join us into our indigenous movement. And uh, then we create, uh, you know, you know, the future, future leaders, the youth leaders, because youth involvement is very, very crucial. And uh, we are talking upon it, um, you know, a lot that if we do not take this stewardship, then who will, right? For example, um, uh, you know, like whenever I, I introduce myself in international platform while, um, um, you know, uh, as a youth, then what I do is I say that I belong from the ancestors of farmers. Um, see, that is what my ancestor told me. That is what my uh, grandmother, grandfather told me. But the irony is uh, neither have I ever seen the farmlands of my uh, grandparents or nor have I ever seen them practicing the uh, farming, right? So, so the devastating thing is uh, we are being alienated from our land because um, in the pretext of development, we have um, faced land grabbing and whatnot. So I haven't seen that. So I think that is one of the big reason that answers why we need to be in this moment and why we need um, you know, youth involvement and future leader. Um, so I think if we incorporate this um, you know, involvement of youth, then um, we can very much uh, improve or maintain the indigenous culture. Uh, so that is what I like to say. And um, regarding, uh, you know, like why cultural practice and tradition of indigenous people are important nowadays. So um, because simple answer is because it inlines with mother nature. And today uh, we are standing here in the words of um, a big climate, climate crisis is uh, ahead of us. And in order to tackle that, in order to mitigate that, our indigenous knowledge uh, plays a very vital role. And even scientists today have recognized that it is very crucial that we um, you know, support and recognize this uh, traditional knowledge 
to mitigate the climate change because we have that knowledge. Our grandparents have transferred it to us and uh, it is actually like practical and proven knowledge. So, um, you know, I think uh, simply because it inlines with mother nature and for the betterment of our entire uh, earth, um, for the sustainable future of our earth, it is very much crucial that we protect our indigenous culture. Thank you. Thank you, Saba. Um, I think that there are uh, there is one more question as well that may related to this. Um, in in the chat, um, Puniti Pum is asking, what do you think is the most significant issue affecting indigenous youth today, and what idea do you have to ad uh, uh, have for addressing it? So I think uh, you have mentioned like several questions at, at the beginning, but uh, maybe you could elaborate more on like uh, one significant issue that important for indigenous youth, and if there are any like solution currently that you are working toward it. So, so um, you know, like uh, there are a lot of issues, and honestly, I cannot like say, oh, this is one of the big issues that we're facing because there are a lot, to be honest. But then, um, I'd like to say that uh, one of the key issues that we're facing is the lack of self determination among us. You know, because um, even the UN RIP it it recognized uh, the, the the our right to self determination is enshrined in UN RIP. But like I said, it is not uh, uh, recognized or implemented in Nepal. So uh, we have not been able to practice that. And every individual has the right to decide their own future, right? And as indigenous youth, we have that right too. But we have not been uh, able to practice that. So that is one of the major issues. And also, I think another big issue that we're facing is uh, our um, uh, land right issues actually, because not only in Nepal, but all, all over the world, if we look at the, uh, from the perspective of indigenous youth, now we have come to the land, uh, to the streets, because uh, the government have sanctioned us as terrorists in some places, right, in the name of, like I said before, in the pretext of development, we have been alienated from our land, we have, um, uh, you know, they have colonized us in our own, own, own soil. So I think the, the land issue is one of the big issue. And what we're doing for it is actually we are on the struggle phase. There are a lot of uh, legal cases uh, going around. Uh, if we're talking from the perspective of Nepal, uh, because, um, you know, we have uh, this issue of hydropower, we have this issue of fast track, we have this issue of um, road expansion in Nepal going on. So we are tackling it through the lens of, uh, you know, like uh, having the help of legal team as well. But also uh, we have been working by, um, you know, disseminating awareness among our people and also using the digital era uh, to, to actually, you know, aware people that what is happening and how can we uh, uh, come together to form solidarity in order to tackle all of that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Saba. Um, any any other speaker would like to add anything to to um these three questions? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Saba, for answering the most of the questions. It's very important. If I add uh, some shortly, just why actually we need to protect indigenous people's culture, uh, their tradition. So uh, I can say that if we don't take any initiative to protect or develop the indigenous culture and tradition. Actually, the indigenous peoples will be lost from the world, one after. So it, the situation will be happen if we do not take any initiative. So how actually we can protect our indigenous people? It is very important. That's why we need to do consultation, collaboration with, between the government and indigenous peoples. All, it is good that already we have some international mechanism like UN United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and ILO Convention related to Indigenous Rights. This is very important. So our government needs to endorse or ratify this convention and this, uh, this instrument and need to uh, implement it through uh, their own policy. This is very important. You can see that we have in the world now around 7,000 indigenous languages, but around 5,000 cultures are related, related to indigenous peoples, but every day indigenous languages are endangering. That's how we need to take some initiative to protect. And why actually indigenous culture needs to uh, protect? It is very important because indigenous, they have own, uh, own system, self-determination system, they have self-governance system. So we need to respect it. But unfortunately, the 
indigenous peoples, this traditional system is not recognized most of the country. And even indigenous peoples term is not recognized in many countries of the Asia. That's why we need to consider these issues. We need to work between government and indigenous peoples and other stakeholders to protect, promote the indigenous people's rights and their culture. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rahel. Yeah, so um, I think we will come to the time of 4 p.m. and I think we have addressed the questions in, in the chat already. So um, just to, to end like this webinar as it to celebrate Indigenous Youth Voice. So maybe I would like to invite like two Indigenous Youth Speaker to just um, give us like the, the closing um, sentence like um to can can you um if you would like to if as as mentioned that today we would like to hear the indigenous youth voice right so if you could share with us tips to work with indigenous youth what would be like a, a short very short trip uh tips for us to keep in mind to to keep the space open for indigenous youth to engage so any of you would like to to share with us first city and suburb Yes, it is. So what I would like to say is that we should wear our culture. So yeah, like what I'm doing is that I have this. Every time I join e, 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 e seminars or programs, I always I always wear this. And also in our product, we also put the this this one. This is the lankit. So mm -hmm. lankit is a something that is found in our culture. So also we should also advocate our uh, the culture that we have or us so um, very confusing our, our, our the, the spelling of our our culture is very confusing so it is write us mera now but it is uh 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 read us mera now so it's because of the soa sound so it's like advocating uh your court with your culture and also uh you need to bring your culture in the platform where anyone can can see it and anyone can relate to it. So yeah, what we're really doing is that we are also uh, um, going through uh, the online, the social media platform right now. So yeah, it is very hard for us to go to the online media platform, but we are really doing our best so that we can top not only our the locals, but also uh, everyone uh, all through uh, the world. Thank you so much, Siti. So I can see clearly that you are very passionate to share your cultures, like through your story and, and product. So I think it would be a tip for indigenous youth to, to show who you are, right, to the world. And, and there will be space that really like willing to engage you. Yay. Okay. And and Sabah, please, um, to, to close this webinar. Yeah. Any tips that you would like to share? Yeah. With? So, yeah. Okay. So like 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 um she said i totally agree with her whenever i i think saba is pressing right okay yes okay um Maybe she will come back in 30 seconds. No? Yes. Hello? Um, am, I, am I audible? I'm so sorry. The power went off. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I was trying to say is I totally agree with her that how whenever I come to any of the workshop, I bring in my indigenous, um, uh, you know, one of the aspects of indigenous um, things. And that is I'm wearing my uh, traditional earring with me right now. Uh, so also, um, you know, that I like to say is whenever you're listening to any of uh, the indigenous youth, then please listen to us without any prejudice, <laughs> you know, and also sometimes, um, you know, the, 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 Hello, I think she's cut off again. Okay. 
yeah so um maybe she will come back but but um yeah I think I I hear her message about like um yeah agreeing with city right like to show out and also um the voice out to to other like organization as well to like um, listen to us without judgment so I think I think this is the key of of how we should work um like uh for 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 driving indigenous agenda like um listening and also like uh, speak out so I think these two are the, the key important things that um it should be the approach that that we are working toward the agenda for for uh, in, include in indigenous use yeah so um thank you so much everyone um thank you city thank you Saba um but she she's um out now but um uh, thank you so much to her and also to Shohel and and Heli as well to to join us um for us to see more opportunities of uh, what are the indigenous youth work and what are the opportunity to engage as well so thank you so much all of the speakers and also thank you so much for all of the participants that are here with us today I also see a lot of active participation that you are sharing your story to the chat as well so very happy to be able to celebrate the indigenous day with you all of you today and our celebration is still going on so we still have several campaign going on uh, you can also see our campaign uh, 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 schedule in the Trello that um, YCAP communication have shared in the chat so thank you so much for today and hope you have a good afternoon good morning or good, good evening for, from every country <laughs>